Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tian Yu. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Google. Um, today, I will talk about our work and design on global retrieving service. Here's the agenda for today's talk. First, I will start with a brief introduction about the, our, the background of our work. Next, I will talk about the existing design. After that, I will dive into details about our new design. So first, the background. So why we need relimiting? Basically, effective traffic management is a key to allow customer to ensure that their microservice and overall architecture is highly available, prevent any particular client from exhausting service resource, and highly reliable, be resilient to misbehaving client from overloading the service. In Envoy, it can delegate the written decision to external service, but it doesn't meet all our needs. So in next few slides of today's talk, um, I will explain why. So first, um, let me talk about the existing design. Here is a high-level overview of a request flow. So on left-hand side, there are multiple clients send a request to a service in the middle. Service have Envoy deploy as sidecar proxy. So before the request reach to the service, Envoy will ask the routing server if the request should be limit or not. So if answer is yes, the static code 429 will be returned. If answer is no, the request will be allowed and sent to the service. So um, let's zoom in a bit, look at the protocol between the Envoy and the routing server. So here is the diagram of a request flow and the API portal interface. So a few things to highlight here. First, as you can see from API interface, it is using unary gRPC mode. Basically, a client send a single request, get a single response back, like a normal function call. Secondly, Envoy query written server for every incoming custom request. Thirdly, so on the left-hand side, the, uh, the custom request is blocked while waiting for the response. So what are the problems with existing approach? Actually, some of them I just mentioned, but let's look at them all together. So first of all, um, the old design doesn't scale very well. So Envoy query written server for every incoming custom request. This still is infrastructure essential means using server infra itself has to support the same volume of requests uh, as a proxy, which could be huge. Secondly, there will be high latency on the client side because the client needs to wait for the response from the server. Thirdly, so there will be low performance on the server side. So as you can see from the diagram here, so if in the unit GPC mode, if there are multiple backend servers available, each RPC could send to different backends. So um, what does this imply and why this lead to better performance? Um, I will explain in the next few slides. So have a talk about the old design, let's jump to new design. So uh, the overall request flow architecture stay mostly same. We still leverage on voice functionality of delegating the written decision to external service. Uh, you probably ask, what's new? So here are three new major, uh, major features to be highlighted. I will go through them one by one. So first, in previous slides I mentioned, Unary gRPC is not good for performance. Here we switch to byte streaming mode. It provides a persistent connection between client and the server. Basically, because in byte streaming mode, uh, so the uh, client and the server can send an arbitrary number of messages back and forth over long-lived stream. So why this is good for performance? Um, first, uh, let's look at the uh, really limiting server side. So this thickness actually help, help us make a full use of server side functionality. For example, caching. Uh, we can avoid the cache miss, uh, the cost of cache miss. So uh, imagine that repeatedly hitting different backend server 
uh, will increase the chance of cache miss. So the written request will have to wait for the data to be available. And besides that, on the server side, it can also have to reduce the synchronization between different backend. So um, think about an example. If one client report its um, usage to the multiple backend server, in order for written service to figure out the total usage number, it needs to synchronize between different backend to do the calculation, which will induce, introduce additional overhead. So um, besides that, regarding protocol itself, it can also help to reduce, uh, avoid the continuous RPC initialization, which inc uh, includes like starting a new HTTP request at the transporter layer. So next uh, is our quarter-based staple approach. So what is quarter-based? Basically, we group the client into each quarter bucket. Why we are doing that? So firstly, because uh, rate limits can be specified in various degree of granularities. Um, by default, all clients are equal. But you can also group the client to uh, so that you can allocate more of your capacity to a high priority client. For example, if you have a production client and a developer client, you may want to allocate more quarters to your production client. Secondly, it can help to associate the response with the request. So in BiDi streaming mode, the order of the response requests are not guaranteed. So basically, the client and the server can read and write in whatever order they want. But uh, uh, for written client, it is required to know which response correspond to which request so that they can apply the written decision properly. So quarter bucket with the bucket ID as identify will serve as a bridge between the server and the client to establish the mapping between the request and the response. So next is how we group them. Basically, we generate the bucket ID either statically or dynamically. So um, let me use a diagram, uh, diagram below to explain this. So basically, on the left-hand side is a configuration. On the right-hand side is a generated bucket ID. For the static method, so the key and the value from the configuration will be used as they are. For the dynamic method, so the value um, of the bucket ID is retrieved from the request header as highlighted in the green color based on request matching between the configuration and the key of the request header, highlighted in blue color. So um, have, have said that, so um, our design is to operate on the quarter bucket basis instead of individual client. So the quarter usage for each bucket uh, includes uh, information like number of requests a lot denied, and the quarter assignment for each bucket from the server includes information like written limited strategy and the lifetime of the assignment. So um, next, it's about uh, how we make it a staple push. The answer is pretty simple. Uh, we are using cache. So we leverage the thread local storage envoy to cache a response from written server. Um, by using cache, it can first avoid the redundant queries to the server. And also, it can improve the latency on the client side if there is already valid quarter in the cache. So uh, last, it's about our report reply, reply pattern with subscription model. So, for, uh, so basically, for written in the server, uh, written client, it periodically reports its quarter usage to the server. And for the written server, uh, it will send back assignment once it has collected enough reports to make the decision. Um, and the subscription model here means that the first report from the client will serve as an indicator to the server that, okay, uh, the client is subscribed to receive future updates from the server. So what the, what's the benefit this model provide? Um, basically, it can provide a more intelligent rhythmization. So um, right now, the written server can adjust the quarter assignment based on real-time usage report from the client. Uh, think about the example below, we call it assign per use. So there's a, like a social media website, news website, and a shopping website. On Black Friday, there might be a spike of internet usage on the shopping website. So once the server receives such a report from the client, 
it can choose to allocate more quarters to the shopping website to allow more requests to go through. So, yeah. so let me summarize the design and uh, wrap it up. So first, uh, this design is uh, more scalable. Basically, uh, we have this stable infrastructure with a cache that can avoid redundant queries to the server. And also, uh, this design is more intelligent because right now, the reading server can adjust the assignment based on the real-time client usage report. Last but not least, the design is more performant both on the server side because it can make full use of server-side functionality and uh, avoid heavy synchronization between different server backends. On the client side, it can you know, avoid sending redundant queries and respond to the custom request faster. Um, yeah. So here is a acknowledgement. So this is a joint work across multiple teams at Google. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's it. Questions? Yeah. Sorry, what's that? Uh, so what's the time guarantee for the reading? So with um, both support, I think uh, per minutes, um, per seconds, yeah. Because it can be specified in the configuration. Sorry, what's the question? Sync So basically, uh, you mean for, so right now it's a byte streaming mode, so we don't need the synchronization on the server side. So because always one server is sent to the, all the data to the one backend server. So this avoids synchronization on the server side. Just wonder uh, if we have a client mm -hmm. that uh, creates multiple connections through multiple servers, how do you synchronize that rate limit? Uh, if I have multiple connections, so multiple clients, uh, you want to synchronize between different clients? Different servers. For the service. So basically, um, our designs not, um, don't doesn't really care about the client's information. So because the client is grouped to the quarter bucket, so what we care is about um, the each quarter buckets. So um, I think our design doesn't need to synchronize between different clients. Yeah, if I understand your question correctly. Okay, so it's a local uh, read limit. Oh, so it's global. Yeah, this is a global read limit. Yeah. Maybe I can sync up with oh, the yeah, offline. Sure. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, so we are targeted to early next year. Yeah. Huh? Oh, so question is, so do you have a target date for this uh, design to be available, like to be used? Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, so that's a good question. So basically, we have a predefined configuration, even on the, so if there's, for example, if there's, there's no assignment, so we have a predefined rule instead of a querying server. And also in the cache side, in the server side, as you mentioned, we can like uh, preload the written decision instead of waiting for the data to be available, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, on Envoy side, there's a caching for the for the written response from the server. Yeah, and also on Envoy side, there's a, like a predefined rule. So for example, if there's no response in the cache, we use a predefined rule to say, okay, allow request or deny request. Then when the data is populated, we look at the data in the cache. Uh, you mean the priorities for? Yeah. 
So uh, this really depends on configuration. And also, not only just priorities, we can um, group the request based on other attributes. So priority is just one of them, so basically. Is customizable, yeah. yeah. Any That's additional it. questions? Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Next we have.